Hey there, people. So, here we've got EJ25 that's going into Mike and Paula's Carmen Ghia. Uh, I am putting it in for the last time. I've taken this motor in and out about three times just to kind of get us some ideas of where the pipes and different thing needs, things need to lay. So, <clears throat> I'm now finally putting her back in. I just resealed the uh, crankcase cover from the back so that we can make sure that's not leaking. Also replaced the rear main seal. Right here, we have the Kennedy adapter plate that will bolt this Subaru motor up to our air-cooled Volkswagen transmission. Uh, here you can see it, big nice thick chunk of aluminum. Uh, this is what it came with. It came with these little studs. And what you would do is you would thread these studs in right here where these, right now these bolts are. And these studs are what would hold the Subaru engine adapter plate side to the Volkswagen transmission. Well, uh, as per some people online, I found that these bolts are a lot more sturdy. They can't back out. And so we're swapping the studs out for the bolts. So first thing to go on is our adapter plate. Okay, there we go. Now, here we have this heavy, hefty dude is our adapter flywheel that adapts the Subaru motor to that Volkswagen transmission. And then we have here our Volkswagen transmission uh, pressure plate and clutch disc. And these will mount inside of this so this whole portion right here is basically the same as a air-cooled Volkswagen uh, flywheel so let me get this guy ran on and then we'll keep going And in this kit uh, that comes with this plate and the flywheel, uh, KEP supplies you with all the hardware you need, um, everything to get this job done, less the clutch and the press pressure plate, uh, and those bolts that I swapped out, you know, instead of using these studs. Keep in mind, I'm gonna go back and torque these guys to spec. I probably over tightened them a little, but not by much. So I'm gonna look the torque specs up on this, these flywheel bolts as well. And, uh, make sure I get that in correctly. Oh, I'm stubborn to start. Might, might 
grab the e racket to get these guys started. which is the one I just took off. is the, the clutch disc and the pressure plate. Now I'm not going to actually install these just yet because I need to torque those guys down and find the torque specs for this pressure plate. I honestly don't know them. I've never done a one fly. I should say an air cooled one fly. But uh, we also got our handy uh, clutch disc centering tool. So that we can make sure that guy sits right where he needs to be. Um, this was actually the used clutch that came out of that uh, Carmen Ghia. And it's uh, made in Korea by Vallejo. So I know it's not from Germany. <laughs> so it's definitely been replaced. It looks practically brand new. You can still see Vallejo here on the, on the, the disc material. And the face, of the, uh, the face of the pressure plate is like you can still see the machine lines in it. So. We're gonna run it because you know that's an extra 200 bucks almost that we don't have to spend and uh, we can apply somewhere else to the budget. Let me show you guys up in here. We've got the transmission and she is ready to receive the Subaru engine once more. Um, we have up here the notch that I've had to cut to allow the intake to kind of come back and around. Here we have one of the coolant lines. I've got some temporary straps holding it up. I've got the more permanent solution sitting on the bench. And we've got this coolant line that runs all the way up here. And then up in there is where our radiator lives. You can kind of see him right here behind that little notch. And uh, let me see. Uh, Get you a look at that. There she is. Don't know how well you can see it because the car's up on the lift. But there we have it. Next video, I'll be slamming this guy in. And you guys can watch. Okay, and there she is. Pressure plate clutch all bolted up everything torqued to spec we are under the car right now and the motor is off the ground and ready to get bolted up to the transmission so let's see if I can get you guys in a spot that uh, works Might be challenging. Ooh. Okay, here we go. You know what? That's not a really fun angle. I'm gonna move it over here. Okay, as you can see, it's a tight fit. I need to get up. 
possibly get that alternator off. Nope. Yeah, I do believe I gotta take that alternator off. We'll bring her in from the top. Hmm. Okay. Let's do round two. Okay, we got that alternator off. Now let's see if we can uh, shimmy this thing up and around. There we go. Okay. I really don't want to take this bracket off, but if I have to, I will. see a problem it's a little dark in there but uh, that clutch assembly is just totally hitting that uh, what do you call it the input shaft Okay, we're in business. This is what I get for not having a tripod or anything. I'm using a vice grip and a sanding pad to mount my phone to the car. Goodness. Look, I didn't even have to shimmy it. It went right on. Oh, there she goes. She's splined, baby. Just like that. Okay. Well, it was a little messy, but we got there. She is now officially married to that transmission. And I am not taking it back off again unless we decide to put a freeway flyer transmission <laughs> which we probably will <laughs> okay peoples she is completely in and self-supported here we have where she's gonna live got a nice amount of room on either side these commission coils make it look closer than it is but lots of room for activities uh, so we go underneath you'll see that that is the temporary exhaust I'm just uh, using that for when I fire it up so I don't burn up the valves but uh, here's our coolant line it ends about right here and we'll follow it and it will just tee in right here that's where the thermostat housing sits it sits like this about like that so we we'll just need a kind of a long 90 and we'll be good to go for the lower hose and then uh, we've got uh, got to get the fuel lines ran up here now uh, there's one that runs through the frame horns and that'll be the return fuel line the other one is gonna come kind of following that exact same coolant line and it's gonna pop up about here and live right about here 
and then there will right about here and then we will have it connect to the fuel lines which are just on the upper side of the head right there like I said, it'll live down in that hole a bit and it'll attach to uh, either the back of the motor or the side of the transmission. And that'll be our supply. And then we'll run the return off of the line that's in the frame horn and run a soft line up to here and connect it in. And the vent guy, um, that's the EGR line. We'll just put a, a little filter on that guy or cap it off and uh, call it good. So, I'll bring you guys up to the front and show you the radiator now that uh, it's on the ground or close to on the ground so here's our setup we've got some bracketry down there that I've built we got this guy zip tied for now but uh, I will build the bracket finally and this guy will sit in there like that nice and firm and solid and uh, we'll get the lower line which uh, you can see so the, the, I don't know if the, I believe the outlet's on the top and the inlet's on the bottom. Uh, you'd think ASC Master Tech would know these things, <laughs> but he doesn't. Um, so the, you got the bottom line down there and this is where the bottom line terminates. So it doesn't have much to go to get to here but uh, we will uh, probably be um, creating another section of rigid line and just having an, a, a little butt connector that connects that right there. And then the other line is gonna run kind of in that same channel as that one and uh, on, on just this other side, on the other side of the, uh, the center line of the car. So there you have it.